No, okay, is it okay? Yes, we can start. Okay, so maybe before I I introduce the speakers, I, I've been uh, for this second session, I've been uh, allowed to, <laughs> to, to, to say uh, maybe a few words for maybe two minutes. Uh, um, so I take this, this, uh, this opportunity. So, Saito Sensei no Tanjubi ni Atari, Nihon, Nihon de Oiwai Suru Koto ga deki nai no de, semete Nihon go de Sensei no Sanji o nobitai to omoimasu. Sensei to no de ai wa pari de watachi no ronu no kou sai shin sa ga okonareta toki de shita. Sono sai ni kare no chojutsu ni hai shi, mata kapatsu na shi se kara no karakuru ron pyo ni watashi wa kanme o ukemashita. Sono toki kara Saito Sensei no とてつもない優しさ、世界への好奇心、数学的教養の複雑、そして膨大なエネルギーを私は目の当たりすることになりました。その凄さは彼の研究の皆らず、彼のとんでもなく楽器な生徒たちが数学界に及ぶした影響から
So this is a complex of erratic representations of eta, sorry. <laughs> yes, and uh, the wild ramification of this complex reflects some complexity of the singularity. And I'm interested in its wild ramification. In Milner formula, we consider the total dimension, which is the sum of the usual dimension and the Swan conductor. On the other hand, we have a Milner number. This is the intersection number of the uh, zero section and the uh, different differential. So, so uh, Milner number can be computed very explicitly, whereas the Valentin cycles complex is in general quite uh, difficult. But Milner formula states that the total dimension of the Valentin cycles complex is equal to this uh, Milner number up to some sign. Today, I'd like to consider the local epsilon factor, which is a more uh, complicated invariant than the total dimension. And uh, I'd like to ask a similar question. So from now on, K is a finite field because we are dealing with the local epsilon factors. But uh, Actually, this assumption is not necessary if we use the uh, results of Yasuda and Guignard that generalize the uh, theory of local additional factors to the uh, general perfect residue field case. But for simplicity, we assume K is finite. And uh, we take and fix a non trivial character psi, and uh, we define the we find a non trivial character on this local field by this formula. And using this uh, non trivial character, we have the theory of uh, local option factors due to uh, Langlands and Turing. And this is uh, our notation. This is, I think, usual, usual one. Now I can isolate the main theorem in a vague form. To an um, isolated singular point as above, one can attach a non degenerate symmetric bilinear form of a K, which, I, which is denoted by uh, like this. Yeah, uh, bar 5F is the underlying space, which is a finite dimensional K vector space. And uh, BF dx is the bilinear form on bar 5F. This uh, binary form satisfies the following conditions. Firstly, its rank computes the total dimension of the uh, vanishing cycles up to the same sign. So equivalently, this rank is equal to the Milner number. And secondly, the local epsilon factor of the vanishing cycles can be determined from the discriminant of the binary form. So I, I will give a precise form later, but uh, uh, yes, this is the main theorem. So in this sense, this uh, non generated bilinear form is a linear algebraic enhancement of the Milner number. And actually, this bilinear form is uh, classically known as A1 Milner number in the A1 homotopy theory, A1 motivic homotopy theory. Okay, so now I explain the plan of my talk. Today, we only consider the constant shift, but uh, it is, of course, more interesting to consider uh, general erratic shifts. So in the next slide, I will explain a relation. Uh, uh, sorry, so for erratic shifts, we have characteristic cycles and epsilon cycles. And in the next slide, I explain the relation between these two cycles and the main theorem 
of this talk. After that, uh, I explained the construction of bilinear forms, and then I, I can state the main theorem when P is odd. When P is two, we need another invariant because the discriminant does not work, work, work well in characteristic two. I introduced the new invariant, which I call alpha invariant. And uh, I, I, I give some examples of alpha invariant and uh, states the main theorem when P is two. And after that, I will give a sketch of the proof. This is the plan. For erratic shifts on a smooth variety, Billingson defines a singular support, uh, which is a closed conical subset of the cotangent bundle. And this uh, singular support control, uh, this singular support is a geometric tool which controls the local acyclicity of morphisms uh, in terms of differentials. Then cycle defines characteristic cycle as a linear combination of the irreducible components of the singular support. This characteristic cycle satisfies the Miller type formula uh, for the erratic shift. So to be precise, so if we have an isolated singular point of a function relatively to the shift, in other words, these are isolated characteristic point, then the total dimension of the vanishing cycles uh, with coefficients in F is equal to the intersection number of the characteristic cycle and the differential. Moreover, when X is projective, uh, the characteristic cycle uh, can compute the euler poincare characteristic of the uh, shift like this. So when F is the constant shift, the singular support is the zero section and the second statement is nothing but Milner formula. For epsilon factors, we have another cycle. As, uh, which I call epsilon cycle. This is a cycle supported on the singular support, but uh, the coefficients within this group. I regard this group as a, as a multiplicative group of erratic numbers, modulo roots of infinity. Similarly, as the characteristic cycle, this Epsilon cycle satisfies a Milner type formula for the local Epsilon factor. So, so for an isolated characteristic point Z, the uh, local Epsilon factor is equal to the uh, intersection number of the Epsilon cycles and the differentials. This intersection number is defined to be this product. So, so we, we write group row of this group as a multiple category. And when X is projective, the global epsilon factor, which is the alternating product of the determinant of the provenance actions with some sign is equal to the intersection number, similarly as a characteristic cycle. But uh, these equalities are taken in this group. So we need to take module roots of unity. This uh, results indicate that uh, in order to understand local epsilon factors and global epsilon factors, module roots of unity, we only need, we only need to know the intersection number. So if we want to understand these epsilon factors without any ambiguity on roots of unity, 
we need to find the refinement of the intersection numbers. Today, we only consider the constant shift case, but uh, uh, I give uh, such a refinement. Okay, then I explain the construction of the bilinear form. So we start with the relative setting. So a family of, we consider a family of isolated singularities for later use. Here S is a base scheme, general scheme, and X is a smooth scheme over S of a relative dimension N. And we have a map F and uh, Z is the singular locus of F. And we assume Z is finite over S. Then if we take uh, a local parameter T1 dot Tn uh, of X, then the partial, and then this finiteness assumption implies that this, these partial derivatives form a OX regular sequence. So to construct the bilinear form, we start with this uh, coherent module. This is a, a upper strength pullback of OS by, by this map. By the functority of upper strength pullback, this uh, J upper strength OS is canonically isomorphic to this one. So G is decomposed like this. And uh, since pi is smooth, pi upper string OS is mm, equal to the canonical shift shifted by N. And then, so I, I is a closed image, so this one is quasi-smorphic to this one. And we want to compute this complex. So to do so, we take a local free resolution of I lower star of Z. So we consider such a complex. So we we have a OX and uh, multiplying DF and go to omega one and uh, multiplying DF again and uh, go to omega two and so on. And we get to finally to the canonical bundle. Uh, since the partial derivatives of F form a regular sequence, this complex is acyclic except in degree zero. So this kind uh, canonical boundary is put in the degree zero. And we multiply omega inverse so that we have the uh, constant shift on, on the uh, on, on this. Then th this complex is a locally free OX resolution of I lower star of Z, and uh, we can replace uh, this uh, coherent shift by this complex to compute this R home. Then we have, so we know that G upper shrink OS is quasi isomorphic to the omega x of i shifted by this is this one tens tensile with the dual of this complex and this is uh, kajai small to this one so we multiply omega inverse here so we have uh, omega inverse here and uh, take the dual we have uh, omega without inverse and we have this one so this is identified with this. So we define bar phi f to be the uh, this uh, coherency. This is locally free OS module because uh, this, this one is a uh, invertible OZ module and uh, G is finite flat, so this is locally free. And the bilinear form is defined to be the composition of this map. So we have the tensor product over OS 
and we will do the test and product over OZ. And this is isomorphic to this one, as I explained this line. And we have trace map to OS. And we have binary form in this way. And it is not so hard to show that this binary form is non-degenerate and uh, symmetric. The symmetricity comes from the fact that this uh, binary form factors to this uh, tensor product of ROZ. So this is the tensor product of invertible shifts. So in this module, we have X tensor, Y is Y tensor X. So this is symmetric. And, uh, and we consider it's discriminant. Uh, using this discriminant, we can state the result when p is odd. So putting s to be spec k, then the, the main theorem is like this. The local epsilon factor uh, in the left-hand side, we have the local epsilon factor with this sign. And uh, on the right hand side, we have uh, uh, this one. So, so let me explain the notations. So this one is the Legendre symbol. So this discriminant is an element of k cross modulo k cross square. So we, we have the Legendre symbol and the tau psi is the uh, uh, quadratic uh, sum associated to the non-trivial character. The epsilon cycle of the constant shift is equal to uh, This one, so using the epsilon cycle, we can only know the absolute value of the local epsilon factors, but uh, its precise form is given by this formula. So this is a theorem in when p is odd. So when p is two, as explained before, the discriminant, the construction of the binary form works over any base scheme. So of course we have a discriminant in characteristic too, but the, character, the discriminant lives in this group and this group is trivial when P is two because K is perfect. Now, it's to define a sign, we want the, some, some element in this group rather than the multiplicative group. To do so, we consider lift to periodic base. So actually, we, it is enough to take a lift to the bit three. We take a smooth, smooth scheme of a bit three and, uh, and the map F tilde, which is a lift or the initial F. We take uh, such lift. Then we have the bilinear form over v3. And then its discriminant lives in this multiplicative group. And the important point is that this multiplicative group contains this group uh, in a natural way. So mapping b to one plus for the Tahimira list of b. The first theorem when P is two is the independence of the lift. So set large n to be this number. So actually when P is two, this number is always an integer, which is non-trivial, but we admit this fact, then the 
discriminant times this sign is equal to is equivalent to one plus four b in in this multiplicative group. So in other words, this sign the discriminant comes from an element of k over p k. And moreover, this b is independent of the choice of the lifts. We can prove this independence. And we have the uh, invariant of the singularity. And we call this element the, the alpha invariant, and uh, we denote it by alpha fz. So it may be confusing, but uh, this alpha this alpha invariant is defined um, as a discriminant, but uh, this is not an invariant of the bilinear form. So there are many lifts of bilinear forms, and the discriminant of the lift of this form uh, are not uh, equal. But if we start with uh, Isolated singular point. If he and if he lift, if he take a lift of this function, then the discriminant becomes uh, independent of the choice. So let me give some examples of the alpha invariant. So let Q be a non-degenerate quadratic form. So then n is even and Q and we regard this Q as a map from uh, this affine space to the affine line and uh, by the non density this map has an isolated singular point at the origin. Then our alpha invariant is equal to the classical alpha invariant of Q. So such a uh, phenomena that uh, alpha invariant can be computed after taking a lift to periodic pace is uh, previously observed by Belgian and Martinet. And uh, our result is uh, uh, some generalization of, the, of their results to a general isolated singularity. And secondly, when X is odd dimensional, the alpha invariant is always trivial. So the alpha invariant is not interesting when the dimension is odd, but uh, this triviality combined with the main theorem of this talk will be the triviality of the local epsilon factor, which is which may be interesting. So in the first example, we consider uh, homogeneous polynomial of degree two. So in the third example, we consider the homogeneous polynomial, polynomial of higher degree. So take a homogeneous polynomial F and uh, then the origin is an isolated singular point of F. If and only if the hyperplane section in the projective space is smooth and uh, the degree is odd. This is not trivial, but uh, this follows from the theory of resultant and divided discriminant. So further, suppose n is even. When n is odd, then the dimension of this variety is odd, then we already know that the alpha invariant is trivial. So suppose n is even, then the cup product induces a symmetric color equivalent by a form on the uh, erratic homology middle degree. So its uh, determinant gives a quadratic character of the GABA group. So this, and by Alting Schreier theory, this uh, determinant corresponds to some element in this group, which is actually equal to this element, the alpha invariant plus this integer. Okay, then I state the main theorem in characteristic two. So 
so the P is two and uh, we are given a map and uh, isolated singular point. And we set N to be this integer. And uh, for simplicity, we assume Z is K rational. Then the local epsilon factor divided by this power of P is equal to the sign. And this sign is determined by the alpha invariant. Namely, this sign is one is uh, if and only if the alpha invariant is trivial in K over PK. So using this uh, description of local epsilon factors, we have some application on the determinant character of erratic homology. So first, we start with the case where p is odd or zero. But this is already known by Saito Taki-sensei. So when, let x be a projective smooth variety of uh, even dimension. So n is even. Then the it erratic homology of middle degree is a uh, orthogonal representation and its determinant is a quarter character. And we have some element in this group. And on the other hand, we have a drum homology and the cup product gives a symmetric perfect pairing in the sense of complex. And we have its discriminant. And the Taki sensei shows that the etal discriminant is equal to the drum discriminant uh, if we multiply this sign. Just to prove this formula, he takes a, a leftist pencil. He first verifies that this uh, this formula is equivalent to the formula for the blow up along a smooth center. And then we can apply uh, the product formula. So when P is two, the discriminant of drum homology does not work. So instead, we consider the crystalline homology. So when P is two, uh, the determinant quadratic character gives an element in this group. And on the other hand, we have the discriminant of the crystalline homology in this group. So my question is that this crystalline discriminant multiplied with this sign is equal to one plus four times the time lift of the vital discriminant. So in other words, this discriminant comes from uh, this element under the canonical injection. So this is true when X admits a lift to the bit, bit ring, because in this case, we can uh, use the proper Bayesian theorem and uh, we can apply the result of Saito. Analyzing Saito's proof, actually we can prove that this is true if X admits a lift to the bit three. This assumption is necessary because for now, in order to define the alpha invariant, we need to take a take one actual lift of the variety. So if we can find a more an interesting way to define the alpha invariant, then we, we can, I, I think we can prove this uh, formula in conditionally. Probably we can use some crystalline method or drum bit complex, but I don't have a, a good idea. Okay, then now 
let me explain a sketch of the proof. The key ingredient of the proof is the continuity of conductors. So first, let me explain what this means. So we consider a family of isolated singularities as usual, but uh, I explain the result with, uh, with coefficients. So S is a FP scheme of finite type and uh, X tilde is also a FP scheme of finite type and uh, T is a closed subscheme, which is finite over S. And uh, suppose we are given a erratic shift G on X tilde. And finally, we assume that the F tilde is universally local acyclic relative to, to G outside Z. And uh, the, this structure map is universally local acyclic relative to Z, to G, sorry. So this is a family of isolated singularities relatively to the shift. So if we so taking each point and uh, taking the base change, so we have a map of a variety. And we can, uh, we have a vanishing cycles complex at each point of ZS. And uh, we want to understand the behavior of this vanishing cycles complex when the point varies in large S. The continuity means that uh, total dimensions and the local epsilon factors behave as if they were, uh, uh, they behave continuously. So, to, so let me be precise. For the uh, total dimension, we consider the following map. Mm, okay, so we, we write the set of closed points like this, and we consider the map from this set to the ring of integers by sending each cross point to the total dimension of the vanishing cycles. And the continuity of the, the total dimension states that this function is locally constant. This is a, a originally the, such as a continuity result is due to Dorinian Romo. And uh, this, this statement is a version of uh, given by Saito. For the local epsilon factors, we have the following result. So we consider a map from the set of closed points to QL bar cross, which sends each closed point to the product of the local epsilon factors with some uh, suitable sign. Then this map, the continuity of the local epsilon factor means that this map satisfies a reciprocity law, which means that this, this map factors through the uh, abelianized fundamental group. And so we get some nice character. And we write Robert for this character. So here you don't need to kill the root of unity. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Means, uh, Japanese yes means uh, maybe English no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Ah, no, that yes, that get up for ego that no one understands. Sorry, yes. Uh, no, I, I don't need to take more Thank you for correction. <laughs> so, actually, we can construct a more refined object on this uh, oriented product. 
So we can, uh, to the, uh, from the data given above, we can construct a smooth complex on this uh, oriented product. Here, infinity S is the section at the infinity. So I don't explain the definition of this topos, but uh, this is in some sense a family of the entire topoi of local fields. So for each, for each point, small s, we also have a similar oriented product. And this oriented product is a subtopos of this uh, topos. And uh, when s is a, is a spec of a field, this topos is canonically equivalent to the eternal topos of the local field at the infinity. And the property of this smooth complex is that if we restrict this complex to each uh, eternal topos of the local field, then this restriction is isomorphic to the direct sum of the local Fourier transform of the vanishing cycles. So since C is smooth on the whole of this space, taking the rank of C, then we get the continuity results of the total dimension as in one. And uh, taking the determinant, we get the second statement using uh, Roman's result on the local Fourier transform. Okay, so we have a continuity of the total dimensions and the uh, local epsilon factors. And on the, uh, on the other hand, the same continuity statements for the Milner number and the discriminant and the half invariant also are also true, but this is rather trivial because we already have a locally free we, we have a locally free uh, module on X and these invariants are defined from this locally free shift. So using this continuity properties, we consider to deform our initial isolated singularity to a singularity which, can, which are much simpler. So namely, we deform Fz to ordinary quadratic singularities, which can be described quite explicitly and uh, easy to deal with. So to do so, we prepare the following lemma. So let f be a function and z is an isolated point, isolated singular point. Then to such a, a sing, isolated singularity, the X is a family of isolated singularity, which contains the initial one and satisfies the following uh, properties. S is a smooth and connected curve. And uh, there exists a k-rational point. The, the base change at this point is isomorphic to the initial one. And uh, Moreover, the exam open then subscheme of S such that for each point U, the one of the uh, point, one of the singular point about this U is an ordinary quadratic singularity with mean number one over two. So using this deformation lemma, uh, we can conclude the proof. So first, we extend the theorem to an equality of the characters by considering a family of isolated singularities. For the local epsilon factors, we have a corresponding characters, which is uh, which is row eight. This one. And for the, uh, we also have a character corresponding to the Luzando symbol. 
and also corresponding to the quadratic Gauss sum. And uh, using, the, using these characters, we extend the theorem to the statement uh, of an equality of between characters. By the lemma explained in the previous page and uh, by the chapter identity theorem, the, our main theorem is reduced to the case for a point in U. But for Z2, uh, and Z, Z1 is an ordinary quadratic singularity, and for Z2 dot Zm, the proof is done by induction on the Milner number, because we have the following inequality. So by the continuity of the Milner number, the Milner number of the initial singularity is equal to the sum of the Milner number of Zi, but uh, if you drop the mean number of Z1, and, and this sum is strictly less than this one. And so, of course, the mean number of Zi is uh, less than the initial one. And we can apply the induction hypothesis. So, by in this way, we we reduce the theorem to the following case. So first P is odd and F is a non-degenerate quadratic singularity. And when P is two and F is defined by this, this one, this is, uh, I guess this is non-degenerate quadratic singularity. And uh, finally, uh, When P is two and uh, the map F is given by an uh, Altin Schreier extension with the sound conductor one. The first two cases are easy and uh, are easy, and the last one is uh, difficult, but I can manage to compute uh, everything when the sound conductor is one. So, so I have a lot of time, but <laughs> mm -hmm. after that, I finish my talk. Thank you for, thank you. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this beautiful lecture. So do we have, uh, I, I don't know <laughs> if I'm supposed to be in charge actually of the, yeah, uh, let me start. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, thank you very much for the good, nice lecture. So, uh, the, the first obvious question is uh, what do you can say in uh, mixed characters case? Uh, yes, or yes, what yes. do you can expect? Yeah. Okay. Then. Huh? Uh, we have the same. Sorry. <laughs> Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This yes. Fine? Okay. So when um, mixed characteristic, so. Mm. Oh, ah. so okay, is, so let okay be a complete DVR mm. of mixed characteristic. And this small case is a perfect receive field. Mm. And X is now a regular uh, 
フラットスキンオーバーオーケーで、ah, yes, this is general Christmas、うん、and this is the singular locus、うん、by invention this one In this dimension of X.、うん、Then we, we, we have a. Ah, and we assume these proper of a S.、うん、ah, okay. So not necessarily isolated. Yes. Okay, yeah. Mm. Then we have a vanishing cycle, and the homology of the vanishing cycle is complex.、Mm. And、uh, so, Brock's conjecture states that the total dimension Of this、uh, complex is equal to maybe we, we, we need a sign. I, I don't、mm. remember correctly, but is equal to、mm. the、uh, <coughs> derived x ray power.、Mm. So, my expectation in In, in mixed characteristic, is that we can、uh, equip Equip a symmetric、mm. perfect pairing on this perfect complex.、Mm. I try to do that, but it is.、Uh, It is actually difficult, technically difficult. The reason is、yeah. that the difficult point is that we, we,、uh, we, we don't have a have a nice resolution of this relative cotangent,、uh, relative differential module. Mm. But when <laughs> the singularity is Is isolated, then we, we can always、mm. shrinking. If we, if we can shrink X, we, we have a similar, we, we can always take a similar resolution.、Mm. Where is Locally free of rank n、mm. and the L is in vertical. And in so, if z is isolated, z is finite, isolated using this. 
resolution, we, we can construct a symmetric pioneer form. Hmm. So in this isolated case, this this one is. Uh, <clears throat> this one. In mixed characteristic case, we have a we have a pairing valued in this group. Mm -hmm. And the uh, so this this is a technical and I, I cannot explain how to do it precisely, but we can define the discriminant from mm. this fact bearing and we can formulate lo local we can formulate a formula for local epsilon factor in mixed characteristic mm. case. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So in this case, so yeah, yes, we, we have a similar form. We, we can expect a similar formula. Mm. And I verified this is true when X is a finite extension. Hmm. In this case, this formula is correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, actually, this pioneer form is uh, can be expressed quite. Expressly, so when X is spec over mm. this way in a form, mm. is this one. Mm -hmm. And our formula is uh, our formula follows from uh, the previous result by NR and uh, NR and, and Saito. Oh. Okay, so I think there is a question maybe from Adriano. Yes. Uh, hello. Thank you for the talk. Okay. Yeah. So my question is, um, so Miller formula compare the total dimension with the, um, with the, the rank of the bilinear form. Your formula mm -hmm. is comparing the epsilon factor with the discriminant. And uh, for, for a bilinear form, uh, you have also the Hilbert symbol. So my question is, uh, what should correspond on the uh, side of vanishing uh, cycles corresponding to what, which which invariant should be co should correspond to the Hilbert symbol of the uh, bilinear uh, uh, symmetric form? Oh, so, sorry, what, what symbol? I cannot hear. Uh, when you have a, a symmetric bilinear Hilbert form, symbol. Hilbert, uh -huh. Hilbert symbol. A Hilbert symbol. Mm. Mm. Oh, so, sorry, I don't know what is here. I don't know. If, uh, I just was thinking it should be something on the. Yeah. I said this, this discriminant is a combination of a Hilbert symbol. Yes, ah, yes, okay. Yes. It's, in, 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 it's including the Hilbert symbol. Ah, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's, no, it's different. It's different. Oh, but, yeah, I think yeah, eventually it's the same thing, I think. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, it was just a question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you.
So in this uh, isolated singularity case, the, for example, you can, if, if this isolated singularity is a quadratic, ordinary quadratic singularity, maybe you can check it also directly. You mean in positive character, in mixed characters case? Yeah, yeah, in, in, in this mixed characters, yeah. Um, I'm not sure because in positive characteristic, we can decompose mm. into a more elementary ordinary quadratic. Ah. So I, I, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, Ryuka has a question. So, Luke, can you, uh, uh, sorry, I. So Luke, we can... You can activate your microphone. So you can activate your you microphone. Okay, now, can, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my question was about this uh, uh, lifting to W3 of K assumption. So can, can, you, can you recall more precisely which assumption you, you make? Is it local? Is it global? Is it uh, necessary? Can you bypass it? Uh, I'm a little confused there. Assumption on the lift, you mean? Yes. At the beginning, you, lift, you, you, need you needed some lift to W3 of K in the four P equals two. So we, we have a, a map over K and we, we can take any, any lift. Any lift we can now we do. No, no, but uh, uh, you mean locally or globally? Uh, or, uh, uh, no. Yes, Lo in, this is locally, yes. So ah. because we are dealing with isolated mirror points, so we, we can localize. Ah, so you can always uh, find lo locally ah, yes, find such, a, such a lifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe your question is uh, on a global case. Mm. Of course, yes. Mm. たくさんそのグローバルの時の書き方を見返し説明したらいいんじゃないですか。なんなんの説明ですか。してなかったと思うんですけど。グローバルなそのアルフィンバリアントの求める。やつの時の過程。ああ、フォーダークリスタリンス
Are there any other questions in the audience? Uh, so I'm not very good to... Ah, yes, so there is a question. Ah, no, maybe it's not a question, sorry. <laughs> Just <a laughs> congratulations to the, to the speakers. Fabrice, you are muted. No? I, what, what have I done? No, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, sorry, I was... Okay, I was... Um, yeah, so maybe we can, uh, so I don't know, question, maybe you can thank oh, the, the speaker. The speaker, and, and we can, and we will start in uh, 10 minutes for the second lecture of this second session. Okay. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.